Hi, this is Chapter 8. Chapter 8 uh, is about the capital budgeting problem. We are going to learn um, the number of the um, decision uh, criteria, investment criteria uh, that is related to capital budgeting decisions. So let's look at that. So what is the capital budgeting? So this is one of the uh, um, fields that in corporate finance that we learned actually in the very first chapter. Uh, so capital budgeting is the process to analyze the potential long-term projects. When you uh, analyze projects in finance field, we basically need to uh, justify using the financial model and uh, uh, to see if the, this project uh, generate uh, positive profit. So, if it is profitable project, then we we have to do. If it is not profitable project, then we should not do that. So that's the big decision for the firm, very long term decision usually, such as the um, acquiring fixed asset, uh, moving like the uh, transfer transferring uh, the factory factories or replacing some equipment things like that. That's pretty long term project. So it's, it's, it involves a large, big, large expenditures. Hard to difficult, hard to uh, to reverse since this is quite large, uh, large projects. So this is very important decision. That's why it is it should be aligned with the firm strategy direction. So usually the 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 strategy department um, introduced some ideas about the projects and the finance departments justify that uh, project using numbers. If it, it generates the profit, then we go uh, go ahead. If not, then we have to reject. So these are the five criteria, the five conditions that uh, should be satisfied uh, by the good decision criteria. Now, first of all, the most important thing is the cash flows that we uh, we basically estimate the cash flow and then we use some some math methodology to determine whether this is profitable or not so the, the to be a good decision criteria it should consider all cash flow that's the first this condition the second condition is time value of money we know that time is money right so and we know that we cannot compare the the cash flows in different timing. That's why we convert the, the each cash flow in different timing to the common basis and compare. So to be a good decision criteria, it should consider this time value of money. The third one is about risk. Because risk in risk, risk actually uh, is quite important factors for the projects. We should have different decisions based on the risk of the project, even though the, the, the cash flows are exactly the same. So to be, again, the good decision criteria, you know, the risk should be adjusted. Now, number four is the rank. Now, uh, many cases we actually have to rank the projects because of limitation of the resources. So suppose strategy department proposed the 10 projects, but we only have resources to accept the three of them, then we have to rank that and then find the best, second best and third best one and go for it, right? So we want the decision um, rules to uh, enable us to rank the projects uh, be, uh, beca because of the reason. Now the final one is that does it indicate at the value to firm means that we so the the purpose of the finance is to maximize the shareholders wealth so the shareholders perspective they are interested in the amount of money that they can get right so um, to be a good decision criteria it should directly indicate the added value to the firm and this value should be dollar amount. So now let's look at from the payback period. The first decision rule is the payback period. 
caper is the simplest one among the three decision rules that we're going to learn this chapter. So payback period is how long does it take to recover the initial cost of the project. So suppose, suppose we have the project, four year projects, okay? and the cost of project is say $300, and they generate $100 in each year. How long does it take to recover this initial $300? And we can easily find for three years, right? So this case, payback period is three years. So computation is kind of simple. It asks him, you estimate the cash flow first, you know, that's the estimation. And then the subtract the future cash flow from the initial cost until the initial investments recovered. So this case, 300, 200, so 200 remaining, another 100, 100 remaining, and then it break even, right? So payback period is three years. It's break even type measures. And what about decision rule? Now, you accept the project if this payback period is less than, so in a shorter period, usually better, right? Then some please set limit. And basically you have to have some preset limit. It means that if you think that this three years is long, so you want to have two years payback, then you reject. If you believe that three years is short enough, so suppose your preset limit says four years, then you accept. So one of the potential problems for this paper period is now we actually have to set that this some preset limit and this preset limit is not predetermined, it's not scientifically determined, it's basically arbitrarily decision. So this is one of the example. Now there is a project that generates the cash flow like this. So initially it costs $165,000 and then Year one sixty three thousand one hundred twenty. Year two seventy thousand and eight hundred. Year three ninety one thousand eighty dollars. That's three year cash flow. So to 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 get the right payback periods now, you find the cumulative cash flow from the initial cost and then subtract basically the each year's benefit, right? The the positive cash flows, right? So first year second year and then second year you remain $31,080. Now the problem here is the third year you have actually you earn more than that. Then we know that the payback period is between this year two and year three, right? So we assume that it's basically just an equally distributed throughout the year. So payback period is now two years this year plus the remaining balance $31,080 divided by the cash flow next year, three years, $1,080, uh, then payback period is 2.34 years. So now, the, the important thing is, do we accept or reject the project? What do you think? Again, the problem of the payback period is, we, because you don't have any preset limit here, right? So we actually have to set a preset limit first. So if you believe that you need to actually get back everything back in two years, then this is too long. So you reject. If you believe that three years is good, then you accept. So these kinds of problems that you actually, you know, um, have to determine because uh, this is not really scientific decision again. Now, think about the decision criteria test. You know, you remember the five tests, right? Number one, all cash flows, right? So does payback period consider all cash flows? Now, this is break even method. So it doesn't matter whether they lose money, make money, or how much money they make after the break even point. The payback period is still the same. So it does not consider the all cash flows. It actually only considers the cash flow before the break even point. So the, the answer is no. Number two, what about the time value of money? As you know, it actually directly compare, just to subtract, you know, 
the the cash flow in different timing. So it actually violates the rule of time value of money. So the answer is no again. Number three, how about risk? It means that if you have two projects with same cash flow, so like the previous one, 2.34 years payback periods, but if they are they have different level of the risk, the decision should be different. It means that your payback period should be different in some way, which is not true, right? Still, your payback period is all the, all the time same, always same. So it does not adjust for risk. And number four, what about ranking? Now, we say, oh, we can rank it, because shorter better, right? So there, there may be two years one, there may be three years one, two years. You can, you can accept that one. The problem here is we really don't know if all, if we always just pick the shorter payback period for us. We don't know if it is really good one. So sometimes no. So we don't know actually. Number five. Does it indicate about increasing values? over values we don't know about the values at all right there's no dollar amount you know they just uh, give you the number of like the, the the length of time so the answer is no so it actually violates all the this good decision uh, criteria will test should we consider to pay back rule for our primary decision rule the answer is no actually it should not be the primary one so what's but people use it why because it's easy to understand you don't have to understand the concept of time value money you don't have to under, understand the concept of like your risk things like that so it is actually very good for what well, good for the small business owners who don't have enough background about finance and they invest not that much money they basically need to get some liquidity so they need to fastly recover their investment then this is good for them if your decision right companies can still like about a small decision such as like the acquiring some like computers like one is 500 bucks the other is 600 bucks and you know decide between them then payback will maybe wor may work because the investment itself is not that much now it also adjusts uncertainty of the later cash flow, which means that, well, the project, the cash flow is estimated. The problem here is we really uh, don't, we are not sure if our estimation is correct. So we can decrease the number of years that we have to estimate because uh, we actually do not consider all cash flow. We just consider the cash flow before the break even. So it's sometimes good one, but sometimes bad one. Now, it buys for liquidity means that in a shorter time period, better. So, well, this is kind of advantage because when you need liquid liquidity. However, the number of these advantages we actually talk about and also it require arbitrarily cut a point like pre-sale limit. And it's biased against a long-term projects. You know, there's some profitable long-term project and you should do, such as R&D. You know, R&D is pretty, quite a long-term project. You always reject if you only consider the length of time that you recover the cost, right? How about new projects? New project probably need more time. So this is not a very good decision rule that you have to use. Still, some people use it, and you can use it as a secondary one. And because we have another another one that a lot more important primary uh, rules that we can use called net present value. Okay. So, what is net present value? Also called NPV. This is quite straightforward concept, actually. This is the answer of how much value is created from undertaking an investment. So how much dollars, how much cash flows is created from these projects. Again, we have to estimate the future cash flow first. Second, we actually set up required returns you now based on the risk of the project. And then using this required return as a discount rate, say R, and this is a cash flow. Find the present value of the estimated cash flow, and you subtract the initial cost. Then you cut, you get the net present value. 
So net present value is mathematically is like that. So it's today's from terminal years. You basically get the sum of the present values. And if you divide two into two, one is the initial cost, the DCC initial cost. And the others is present value of the future benefit. So we know that, well, so we like to have a project that benefit is larger than the cost, right? And ben if benefit, we have to compare, so we cannot compare the, the cash flow in different timing. So it should, should have the common basis which is the present value. So present value of the benefit should be greater than the initial cost. If so, then this cost, this should be greater than zero. So MPB greater than zero. Positive MPB means this is good project, we accept. If MPB is negative, it means that your cost is larger, so there's no reason why we accept the project with larger cost. So we reject the project. Now the decision rule. If MPB is positive, then we accept the project. Okay? So positive MPB means we can add the value to the firm. We'll increase the wealth of the owner, shareholders' wealth. So this actually is the the present value of the amount, present value of the the added value to the firm of the project. If it's positive, then this is good. If it's negative, this is bad. So MPV is the direct measures of how well this project will meet the goal of increasing shareholders' wealth. This is very nice actually measure. So this is sample projects again we that we actually do before the same one. So the cash flows now saying zero hundred sixty five thousand initial cost and then three year cash flow sixty three thousand one hundred twenty year one seventy thousand year two seventy thousand eight hundred year two ninety one thousand eight ninety one thousand eighty dollars year three. So that's the that's the thing we need actually. If the risk is 12%. So uh, the discount rate is 12%. What is the MPV? Let's look at it. So, it's actually the MPV equals to now 165,000, that's the initial cost, plus 63,120 divided by 1 plus 12%. That's the present value of the cash flow one plus 70,800 times 1 plus 12% square that's the present value of the second cash flow and then $91,080 divided by 1 plus 12% to the third which is present value of the third cash flow so when you com compute this then you can get the MPV and this is kind of hard to compute, you know, you can do manually, but we can also use the calculator called the cash flow register that we learned in chapter 5, you know. So this is, this is the case that we have multiple cash flows, you know, different uh, timing, but not even so, we cannot use the annuity, we can only use the cash flow register, right? So if you record the memories, you know, Let's look at the calculator again. Now there's a CF button, right? So press CF. And you have CF zero equal to zero. That means that the cash flow is zero. Today's cash flow is zero. Now you have to have today's cash flow greater than, uh, I mean, it's not zero. So we, have, we actually have to put the numbers here. Okay, so let's look at it and uh, let's do that. Now, before doing it, uh, I suggest that you press second and clear work to clear previous work. Okay, so do it. And then let's start. So 165,000 negative is the cash flow zero. 
So 165,000 press. Press that number. You change the sign. Okay. And you press enter. Now again the enter is this one. Okay, right? Then you have CF0 equals to negative 165,000. Okay. Now, now you press down. Okay. And you have C0 once. It's first cash flow. You have 63,120. So 63,120. And again, press enter. And you have C01 equals to 63,120. And again, down arrow. And you, you just leave this F01 equal to 1 always. Because this is the frequency of this cash flow. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, frequency of the, the cash flow. And this frequency just leave 1 because, you know, the frequency here is means that the, the, you have to have same cash flow at the subsequent years. There's no same cash flow, just leave 1 and down. And there's C02, C02 equals to now 70,800, so 70,800, and enter. You have C02 equals to 70,800, right, again press down, you leave F02 equals to again 1, down. Last cash flow C03 is $91,080 and press enter. So $91,080. Enter. And you have C03 equals to 91080 And again down. This one again. And you have F03 equals to 1, right? Oops. Now, if you look at this, Cash flow zero, negative 165,000. First cash flow 63,120. Second cash flow 70,800. Third cash flow 91,080. So that's the end of the putting all cash flows into the to the cash flow register. Now there's a button called MPV next to so yeah, press MPV. Then it's time to put the interest rate. Now interest rate is 12. So 12 enter. So 12 and again enter is this one, right? And you have I equals to 12. It means that your interest rate is 12. And again down. And then press CPT. This compute. Then you have should have MPB equals to. $12,627.41 So, to make a decision, we always, always just uh, go for the project with positive MPB. This is positive. This, this project will generate $12,627 in present dollars, basically, value, you know, and added this value to the firm. So, this is good project, so we have to accept the project. Okay. So accept. The MPB is twelve thousand six hundred twenty-seven dollars and forty-one cents. Part of MPB. So again, the MPV is the present value of the inflows, the benefit minus the cost, initial cost. So if it is zero, then is that basically exactly repay the invested capital? So if it is greater than zero, then it actually generate positive profit. So it, uh, it is, it represents a net gain in shareholders' wealth, right? So let's look at the this desirable criteria again. The test now does it consider all cash flow? Yes, it considers all cash flow. This is good. Yes, right. What about TBM, the time value money? We calculate present value. So this is. This reflect the time value of money. What about the risk? Now, how to adjust the risk? You actually can change R, the interest rate. So if 
the project is riskier then you increase increase the required rate of returns then you, you're gonna have the actual less MPP vice versa so you can adjust the risk by changing R the answer is yes what about the ranking this is about ranking we can accept the project if MPV A is greater than MPV B then accept A so higher MPV always better doesn't matter how much you invest it you know higher MPV means that you actually add more values to the firm more values to the shareholders wealth so it always 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 just a good it directly measure the added value to the firm so it miss all five desirable decision criteria it is the best decision rules in capital budgeting so it dominant method it always prevail if you have any conflict with between MPV and the decision from other decision rules then always always just go accept the idea from the MPV the result from the MPV because MPV is the best method in capital budget okay. so this is the end of the first video clip and from, from next video clip we're gonna talk about IRR